The Grind, brought to you by Dakota Decoy, Righam Wright Waterfowl, Heavy Shot, Lucky Duck, Mud Buddy, XL Boats, Delta Waterfowl, and Wild Deer. Additional sponsorship provided by these fine companies. Delta Waterfowl dates its uh, incorporation back to 1911. It was started by duck hunters who were curious about duck biology, where ducks winter, where they nest, uh, how to raise more ducks, and they started putting money together to raise money to, to research uh, duck biology. It was One of those people was James Ford Bell, the founder of General Mills, and he saw the potential for a research station up on the Delta Marsh in Manitoba because we rapidly began to realize that the prairies were where ducks basically were either succeeding or failing in terms of the uh, fall flight that goes back down the flyway. On these four guys. On four. Get him. Hey. Sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> I did that to you. I'm so sorry. He's gonna get me. Okay. That's okay. Nice job. Why did she jump off camera? Like that? <laughs> Jeez. I didn't mean to shoot everything. You got that long one, Garth? Yeah. Okay. You want to grab it? You want to get it? Yeah. yeah we got a bunch more we got birds, birds coming. coming. Today? Today? Come on, dude. <laughs> Yeah, really Delta started with student research and so we funded students beginning with one of Aldo Leopold's students from the University of Wisconsin, a fellow by the name of Albert Hochbaum. And so it started in the, in the 30s, the student research right up to present day, we're still funding masters and PhD students to try and learn more about ducks and also train our future professionals in this field. More recently, say in the last 20 years, we've really gotten into kind of targeted research and advocacy work. So we're working on things like predator management on hen houses, trying to find out ways in which we can best spend our money to raise the maximum number of ducks for us as duck hunters. Get him! Nice. Good job. Nice. nice. Hey, you left me one. Yeah, I did. Thank you. I shot Gar, set the eye. There you go. There you go. Don't put me in the middle. Um, yeah, I'm just going to just sit back. Just, Three. Like, like, give me a camera. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, they said in there perfect. <laughs> Oh, we weren't shooting them little ones. <laughs> you know, they were like, I was defending our myself. Like, no. <laughs> defending myself. <laughs> A mallard hen must incubate her eggs from 25 to 30 days. This means she and her eggs are susceptible to predators and predation the entire time. Hen houses have as high as an 80% nesting success rate, making them the most cost-effective tool to increase duck production. started all about ducks and learning more about ducks so we could raise more ducks and then in more recent years we started to spend time in addition to working on raising ducks on making sure that we protect the right to duck hunt. So the mission has evolved in the last few years to add the protection of duck hunting to the raising and management of ducks. <laughs> Get him, John. Oh, get him. There we go. <laughs> See that pause? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see him. We can, you didn't need to hit those. You said get him, right? Get him, yeah, him. Yeah. Right, I'm going to kill him. Yeah. I'm probably get them a little closer. They're just a little bit. They're gonna... Dude, they're right in front of Cody's face over That's here. Well, no, I'm talking that right here. Right, right in front? Yeah. Get him. Can we just only get one off. No, two. 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 That's not a smart one. Back. Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest challenge that Delta and all of us as duck hunters face is the future of duck hunting. Uh, we've, we've seen really in both Canada and the U.S. a decline in the numbers of duck hunters and it'd be easy to give up and say, well, look at this market is actually declining, we should maybe go do something else, but we don't know what else to do because we are duck hunters. So we're, we're in it with, in thin times like today and we'd like to see through hunting advocacy work that we can do and get chapters out there taking kids out hunting and promote hunting in any way, shape and form that we can that will ensure the future of both Delta as well as duck hunting. Nice shot. Perfect, good job. Perfect, good job. Two more, two more right in front, two right in front. Kill that face. Nice shot. I just didn't want to die. Is it? You shoot that? No. I was watching you miss. <laughs> well, I hit it with one of them and well. it just didn't, it, like stunned him. Maybe I do need one of those heavy shots that are hurt in the it's critical. Delta, uh, a long time ago, made the decision we were not going to accept uh, government money. We wanted to stay independent of government because we wanted to influence policies, both agricultural policies and policies that affect hunting. And our, our belief is that you have to stay focused on donations from duck hunters and, and not really get into your funding coming from government if you want to stay independent and be an effective advocate for, for ducks and for duck hunting. Money goes to raise more ducks and the money goes to make sure that you will be able to duck hunt in the future, both in the U.S. and in Canada. So we do research, we do predator management, we do nesting structures to help mallard elevate their nest success and we advocate for both better policies for habitat and for better policies to protect the right to duck hunt. Okay. Hold on. Ooh. 
Send pause. Did we get that? <laughs> I shot second and it was dead <laughs> when I shot. Sorry. Yeah, it's interesting if you look at uh, our, our efforts in a, in a broad area that is the prairie pothole region that extends all the way from northern Alberta all the way through Iowa. So it's this massive area on the landscape that ducks come and it's called the prairie pothole region and it raises over 70% of our ducks on the continent. So it's a big challenge and so a lot of our efforts we've realized over the years are not going to be all done by duck hunting. So it's privately owned farmed landscape. So it's a massive issue and a big area, so we have to look at ways that, we, that meshes together between conservation interest and the interests of the farmers themselves. And so we think in Canada we've developed something called alternative land use services that actually embraces the, the passion that the farmers themselves have for the environment and for our precious ducks. So that's something I think that uh, we're real excited to be working on. We've got projects in many provinces in Canada and we hope that it you know, someday be, approaches what has been done in America through the U.S. Uh, Farm Bill and the CRP program. Look at the ones whiffling out on the 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Huh? We come back on the right. Okay, let's let's shoot in the small flock. <laughs> yeah, the one in front. We're gonna shoot into these guys. Hey, no, I'm gonna shoot. Nice work, man. Wow, Didn't go after any of the ducks that should have been killed. <laughs> what happened? What did we get? Three? Four? Three? Yeah, one, two, know. three. Yeah, I three. This is the mall, one, two. This is two. I see, there's three. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three. Wow. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? There's a lot of blazing going on. <laughs> Nothing solid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Every, every shot's gonna lay guys. <laughs> you got it, guard? Yeah. On the left, on the left. Get down, down, down. Get ready. Get him. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> 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 
Let's talk about some of the factors that go into selecting a puppy. First thing you want to do is find a reputable breeder. Go in, do your research, find a breeder that's, that does all the health clearances on his breeding dogs, get references. Find somebody that's breeding these dogs for the right reason. When you're actually going to select your puppy, you want to find something that's right in the middle, you know, the average puppy. You don't want the most aggressive puppy. You don't want the least aggressive puppy. You want just the average pup. That's going to give you the best chance of getting that pup that's going to be healthy for years to come. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Nice. Good job. Good job. <laughs> get him, get him. Yeah, one of the best things about the Delta chapter system is, is that we have what we call the Waterfowler Heritage Fund. And what that is, is that a local chapter can keep up to 25% of their net proceeds and put that back into something locally. So then you can actually see and touch and feel what, where your money's going. So, you know, some of the money comes to Delta, some of it can stay in your local community. So you can do great things like wood duck boxes, hen houses, take a bunch of kids hunting, you know, educate people about hunting in your community. So that's, to me, the most exciting part about uh, the Delta chapter system. <coughs> Get him. Thank you for leading me one. <laughs> oh, we got another group. Confront here. <laughs> More ducks coming. Right here, right. Get ready. Right here on these four. Get him! Oh, come on in! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of ways and the, the first and foremost become a member, get on our mailing list so you can read the work that we're doing and understand it. You can help volunteer and create uh, a, an event in your local neighborhood to raise funds and uh, put money both locally into issues that are important to duck hunters and continent-wide into issues that are important for duck populations and for duck hunters. We really depend on private donations because of that decision to stay independent of government. And so that makes our private members, our duck hunters, that much more important to us at Delta Waterfall. Join us next week for more of the Grind Waterfowl TV. 
Check us out on the web at thegrindwaterfowl.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter.